high branded artists and president of champion strategies and also doing our public speaking workshop just for you who would like to find out more or be in a little bit more control of this thing called public speaking. So today we're gonna to give you some free information, but we want to lean on it this way. Have you ever been in a situation where your topic has to be telling a good business story? Now, your boss comes to you and say, we want you to do a speech about us. We have uh, an award ceremony. Uh, we're uh, retiring someone, but uh, we want you to come up with a business story. Now, how do we attack something like that? Well, the first thing we have to choose the business story that we want to tell. Now, notice that I didn't say choose perfect business stories or the world's best business story. Just pick a story to develop and tell, either from your own experience or borrowing something that you've heard or you've read. Now, once you have that, talk through your story out loud. The first time you do this, you'll probably sound and feel awkward. Public speakers call this the first time a stumble through. You may have several false starts. You'll probably put in too much detail or in your mind, maybe a not enough detail, but resist the temptation to write down your story and work it out on paper. Here's why. What works on paper really works in the telling. So we want to make sure we have it here first before we put it down on paper. That's because like regular stories, business stories are an oral. That means that the audience and yourself are auditorially listening to your form of communication. That's why the best way to develop business stories is by saying them and listening to how they sound to you before you present it to them. Now, everyone's favorite part when we're trying to learn a good business story is my favorite thing to do, practice. Yes, practice, 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 practice. Stumble through the first telling, stumble through the second one, Make sure that you get all of them right. And once you've done that, guess what? Do it again. It'll probably sound a little better than the first time. And it will. Because in the beginning, there may be some challenges. In the middle, there may be some actions. You may say, my nonverbal needs to be here. At the end, there'll be some outcomes that you'll probably shake your head at. But each of these sections are important, and here's why. Each one should get roughly the same amount of time and attention when you're telling your story. Now, once we have that done, use the mix and match approach to practicing. Most people practice a story or any other public speaking from the beginning to the end, right? Beginning to the end. Unfortunately, you'll get bored and your story won't be as effective as you want during this practice. So instead, try telling the story in sections in random order. This way of practicing will help you keep on your toes because I have to remember where I was at, where I jumped to. It'll help you become more flexible as a storyteller because you may get interrupted. You may lose where you're at, but in your head, since you practice it, I know where I can pick back up. Even though I mix this one session, I can always come back in and address that section later. Give each story section an 
equal amount of attention. That's the only way that the business story is going to laugh. If it's a serious one, if you want it to be funny, but we have to look at it. So if you can think in middle beginning, let me try it again. End, beginning, middle. Let me try it again. Middle, end, beginning. Let me try it again. You got the routine. So here's what's going to happen. Eventually, you'll be able to jump to any part of the story, any section that you want. And by doing it, not only is it freedom, not only is it knowledgeable by the presentation you're going to do, it's going to be exciting for you to do because you're going to do it in your way. Now, some other things to think about doing business stories, make sure that you're doing something that you're not going to hurt or disrespect anyone. That's not what this business story is about. What it boils down to is this, because you're building muscle memory as well as mental skills, telling your business story will become something that you're going to start incorporating in your everyday work life. Now, if you are public speaking, you're going to always refer back to that because you practice it in a way that only they need to know is this part. Try your story out on people before you start. Your friends, your family members, you're going to be gathering around doing something. Throw it at them. Watch their verbal, nonverbal. If you do have something funny in there, let's see if they pick it up and if they laugh. This is good feedback for you because when you try different ways, you'll discover the weak points. And let's just work on those weak points. Your business story will get better and better if you continue to practice and practice. Why? You'll get comfortable. You'll be relaxed. You'll discover new ways of opening and closing and twisting it. You'll actually start having fun telling that story. So remember, like fine wines, Good business stories also get better with age. Once again, Brandon Hardison, President of Champion Strategies with our ongoing series on public speaking. And as always in parting, you go out and make it a champion.